So here's uh, part two of the review. Okay, so solar radiation. So the sun is the atmosphere's major source of energy. So energy from the sun is in the form of electromagnetic radiation or waves. Okay, so we have several, or we have different types of electromagnetic radiation. Starting from the left towards the right with cosmic rays, gamma rays, x-rays, and ultraviolet. So these are high energy waves, and they can cause harm to humans. Then from there you have visible light, all right, so Roy G. Bibb. Okay, so you have your ultraviolets, your violets, your blues, greens, yellows, orange, all the way to the red. So as you're going from left to right in this, in this example here, the wavelengths are increasing. Then you get into infrared radiation. So infrared radiation is radiation that you can feel, which is actually heat, heat energy. And if you see, if you notice, the wavelengths are longer. Then you have microwaves, and then you have your radio waves. But the key thing to understand here, so we can see visi the visible electromagnetic energy or light, but as for infrared energy, that's heat energy. So that's heat being given off by an object. And again, the wavelength, the wavelength of heat energy or infrared is longer than visible light. So what causes infrared energy to be trapped in the atmosphere? Well, you have certain gases. Uh, these gases, gases in the atmosphere absorbs the infrared energy. Right? And these gases are carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. Right? So these gases, carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor, these are your greenhouse gases. Right? So these are the gases that help trap the heat or all of the heat that's been absorbed by the initial sunlight from the ground and is radiated or re radiated back into infrared energy, which, which are longer wavelengths. Okay, but carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor are your greenhouse gases. So the trapping of infrared energy within the Earth's atmosphere is called the greenhouse effect. Now, without these greenhouse gases, the Earth's temperature would be far too cold. So we need these greenhouse gases to keep our planet warm. But however, if we have too much of these greenhouse gases, what's going to happen to the planet? Well, the planet's temperature is going to rise. So if you notice, in the past 40 to 50 years, Okay, we have a, a chart. This is our Keeling chart. And essentially it's showing you that the amount of carbon dioxide has been increasing steadily since, only up to the present time. And we also know that the Earth's temperatures have been rising along, uh, along the same period of time. So there appears to be a correlation or match or relationship between the amount of carbon dioxide in, in the atmosphere and the Earth's temperature. So what we know, or what we have observed, the more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, the hotter or the warmer the Earth's temperature is. So that's something that you should look out for. And again, the greenhouse gases are carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. Now, something that's been popping up from time to time in the last several regions is, uh, again, the water cycle. And especially the part about moisture leaving plants into the atmosphere. And that's transpiration. So they've been asking about transpiration in more recent regions. So basically, it's the evaporation of water or the leaving of water from plants into the atmosphere. Okay, now just very quickly, the water cycle, you have precipitation where water is falling, then you have some of it is run off, uh, it's run off, that so it runs across the surface, and in this example it goes into a lake, 
some of the rain or some of the precipitation is infiltrated through the underground, through underground. Okay, and then you have groundwater flow and it escapes. And again, some is some uh, is absorbed by plants and then it's let loose or set into the atmosphere through transpiration. Then the major source of water into the atmosphere is through by the ocean by way of evaporation. So as air is rising, it cools, condenses, and it forms, uh, eventually forms clouds. Then you have precipitation, right? And the cycle pretty much repeats itself. So that's something, again, to, to look out for. You have evaporation from the ocean or evapotranspiration from from plants, vegetation, then it goes through a uh, deposit of condensation, which you're going from the gas phase to the liquid phase, then eventually you have precipitation, some infiltrates the ground, while others run across, or while other source of water run across the surface, and, and then back into the main body of water, and then the cycle repeats itself. Okay, so and, and again here's just the definition, evaporation from the surface of oceans and other bodies of water and from the soil, transpiration of water from plants adds to water vapor, vapor transport of atmospheric water in, in clouds, precipitation on land and oceans as rain, sleet, hail or snow, then you have runoff on the surface or a trough or through. Right. Now you have something that's another topic or concept that's been asked recently is the whole idea of a lake effect snow. So if you live around upstate New York near the Great Lakes, you, you understand the whole process of lake effect snow. So essentially during the winter time, you're going to have cold, dry air that's going to run across is going to run across the Great Lakes. So if you look at this diagram, the land mass is at zero degrees Fahrenheit. Then it goes over it goes over water, which is about 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So water vapor condenses, it rises to form clouds. Now, if there's enough moisture, if there's enough moisture, then that moisture is going to fall in, in the form of snow, and it's going to dump heavy, a large amounts of snow, in the areas near the lake. This is what we call lake effect snow. Right, so you can find lake effect snow, or lake effect snow occurs along many places near the Great Lakes. So places in Syracuse, New York, say around Syracuse, Buffalo, okay, so Niagara Falls, Rochester, Syracuse, Oswego, uh, and even to some parts of where you have the, the Allegheny Plateau, during the winter, they experience lake effect snow. Now, when the, when the lakes freeze, then that source of moisture disappears, or it's not available. Then the whole lake effect snow machine stops. But as long as the, the lakes are not frozen, you have this large source of water, water vapor, which eventually it gets picked up by the winds, okay? It cools, condenses from clouds, and then dumps a ton of snow. So that's lake effect snow.